Hi guys, hope you're all well. Uh, today uh, I'm going to be playing with a bit of Pardo. Um, I don't use it a lot, it's kind of, I use it for like my specials. Um, no other reason than it's just um, not that easy to get hold of sometimes in the colours that I want. Um, Doris is back. Will you go and sit down? Please. I told you you could come in if you behaved. That cat will be the death of me, I tell you. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, so I just kind of use it for um, special commissions and things. Uh, and plus, takes a little bit of um, time to get it um, to how I want it. Uh, it's not difficult to work with at all but you've got to make sure that it is warmed up really well um, I pop it on the radiator um, on uh, some bits of card so it's not got direct heat um, because it's made with beeswax and you need to get that beeswax soft so that it works well um, but I'm not going to go into major details about Pardo guys there's so much information out there um, I'm not going mean, to over repeat myself because I don't use it that often uh, right so I'm going to make a faux stone today uh, I'm just going to call it a banded agate um, um, and what we're going to do is uh, in my usual four stone techniques I uh, make a few little blocks of different colour and one may be Skinner blended and one will just be layered and one will get a load of porks and this one's going to be slightly different because I wanted to introduce um, like a fractured layer into it so I'm going to use the technique um, that I've used in one of my videos I'll pop the link up there if you don't know or if you haven't seen it just like a four quarts um, but clear so I'm going to use that in a bit of a layer as well so um, I've got some Pardo transparent and again guys you can use whatever clay you've got you don't have to do this with Pardo it's just because I'm doing a special something for somebody that I thought I'd use Pardo so Pardo transparent and then I've got old gold I've got olivine which is a lovely um, olive green and I'm going to use a uh, topaz which is a lovely orangey color I'll just put these on the side then you can see the colors together uh, this is it's looking a bit yellowy on the film but it is quite an orangey yellow it's lovely um, and we're going to make uh, um, again you're going to need the tiniest amount of these to color the transparent clay uh, translucent clay uh, we're just going to make maybe three, uh, I'll find my notes, three uh, Skinner blends, uh, mixing these up. And then we're going to layer them up and then we're going to put the fracture on the top. So, oh and I've, I've just got a bit of um, Cernit out because I don't have any light gold in Pardo. So I'm just going to use a little bit of rich gold. Uh, turn it and you'll need uh, a tiny bit of white just a pinch to color some translucent um, so first I'm going to go and condition all this and then we can add colors um, and you can see how much color I'm adding to each one then might give you a better idea so I'll go and condition this and I'm going to condition it on a uh, three um, I always condition this really thin and then build it back up to a thickness just to help um, any placking. Um, so I'll condition this on a three and everything else should be on a three unless I say otherwise. Right, I'll go and get this sliced and um, conditioned 
and I'll be back in a min. Okay guys, I've got some translucent here on a three. Uh, I have got a little bit more off to one side and I've just put some to one side just to cool down a bit for our final block. Uh, right, where's my little square cutter? I'll just cut some squares roughly out of this because um, we're going to need quite a bit of translucent again for this so let's one oh it's stuck to my table two three four how many do we need we need three different Skinner blends right what I'm going to do is if I can pick this flipping that cut it is it's not sticky to touch but it sticks to anything you put near it it's wonderful but weird stuff right so we need to make three uh, Skinner blends so we're going to need three uh, colors making up uh, I'm just going to cut these two in a half um, so we've got one and a half squares of clear uh, translucent um, and then we need a little bit of colour in all of these so our main colour is the green and we literally just need a slither of each guys um, probably an eighth of um, a square at the same thickness so I'll just cut a, a piece off the same thickness and we can call that a half couldn't we yeah uh, so I'm going to um, so that would be a quarter of a square that would be an eighth of a square so literally that much of green let's put that away orangey yellow and I've picked this old gold uh, because it has like a green tint to it um, so it really works well with greens um, it's a really lovely colour and again I'll just cut a slither off and a quarter of that um, right and we also need uh, a little bit of gold um, of the cernic gold don't we yes so I'm doing green to gold gold to yellow yellow to um, the uh, Cernit gold I'd forgotten about that one guys sorry and again just a little slither of this like that I'll put that extra bit on so we've got a green an orange old gold and gold And we need to obviously now get these um, conditioned up, uh, not conditioned, uh, blended up. Um, 
and what I'm going to do is get my translucent together um, I think this three is going to be a bit thick so I'm just going to knock it back to a four guys sorry um, I'll put everything through on a four because I think that this three setting is just a little bit too thick um, so I'll go and get these other bits ready uh, and then we can start making our layers see you in a minute sorry guys my head is just up my bum isn't it um, we need a bit of white as well so I'm just going to do um, one square with um, not as much as that to be fair guys maybe half of that uh, just a nice a nice sorry I'm over there again uh, a nice pinch of white with some translucent right I will now go and do these see you in a minute okay so I've got some trans and white here I'm just going to pop that out the way and I've got I'm just going to put them in the order I'm going to be working with them so I've got my green I've got my old gold I seem to have something stuck to my desk there which I'll wipe off I've got my orangey amber yellow colour and I've got my normal gold and what we're going to do is make Skinner blends working through these so I'm just going to gently fold this piece over I need green to the old gold so that will be one blend uh, I'll maybe do it like that and then I need the gold to the yellow and the blends don't have to be brilliant guys you just need a blend so I'll just cross those pieces over and do it like that maybe buff them over a little bit uh, they don't have to be perfect at all just get a bit of a blend going uh, and then I need this to this uh, let's have a look what have we got I'll cut a bit of that off um, maybe do extra on that one right and then I'm going to do yellow to the new gold and each one of these is going to be um, Skinner blended and then we just want uh, to stretch it out going from darker to lighter or from one color to the other um, so once you've done your blend pass it through so that it's a long strip or you know a strip that you can work with if we're going off this uh, I need my strip to be about that wide if that makes sense right so I'll go and get these three done uh, and then we'll work on our layering see you in a minute okay guys so I've got my new gold to yellow I've got my yellow to old gold and I've got my old gold to green and as you can see mine have gone a bit skinny but it doesn't matter because we can stretch the block out as we're working so I'm just going to start with the green one first let's turn it around because I want the darkest colour on the bottom and I'll just pop this down and just stretch it a little bit so it is almost the same size as uh, my cutter uh, it doesn't like I say doesn't have to be perfect because when we roll it a little bit uh, we're gonna get um, the shape back uh, it just so happens that mine didn't uh, cut, uh, 
shape very well when you I suppose it's when you're using um, smaller pieces isn't it so I'm just going to put two greens down um, first just so I know that my first band will be uh, a nice thick one and then of course we're just going to um, layer up with uh, translucent so I'll just cut a few pieces and again I'm just going to give it a little stretch it's not very stretchy pad or um, there's not a lot of giving it uh, you see it starts to break easily not that that matters again because you know we're making a banded stone so you know a few gaps won't matter much so now I'm just going to do um, this green to gold uh, yeah green to gold isn't it and then I'll pop uh, another bit of translucent oh definitely doesn't want to stretch today this one I'll put another bit of translucent on and then I'm just making sure my lighter ones are at this end again not that it really matters uh, and I think I will just pop this last piece on going that way so the lighter touches the dark just for a bit of contrast and I'll finish off with a piece of translucent again I'm just going to try and warm it back up a little bit and get it to, to stretch and then oh, a bit of clay on my roller just give it a little roll and this of course is where we can um, get it into some semblance of a square just by giving it a little roll and stretching those pieces out there we go so that's our first block with the dark green on the bottom pop that to one side Oh, I've got my heating on in here again because I want to keep the clay warm and I'm melting let's have a little drink right now we're going to do the old gold oh cat fluff old gold to yellow and old gold will be the bottom because that's the last colour we did on the last blend uh, and this one hasn't come out as big so I'll probably just get three and a bit layers out of this one and again so I'm starting with the last colour uh, which is my old gold and I'll just cut myself some translucent slices out now with this one I'm not going to put two lots of colour down I just wanted a, a thicker band on the bottom um, I just warm this up again and get it to stretch a little bit to fit let's get this to stretch out a little bit again trying to be careful not to um, and the yellow is this end isn't it so I'll put the darkest bit of yellow at this end just to give a little contrast between the layers uh, and I'm just going to break this up and smudge it in it'll just add a bit of something you don't have to do this guys I just don't want to waste this little bit of colour Oh. just 
get this to warm up again pop that bit on there and I'll just drop that little scrap on there give it a little roll just get it to go into a bit of a square like the other one and there we go that's our next layer and then we've got our final uh, Skinner blend here let me just I've got some bits stuck to my desk that are annoying me just clean them up and then we've got our last one which is going to be yellow on the bottom and then merging uh blending into gold so i'm just going to because there's quite a bit of yellow on that one um i'll make sure we've got a decent sized piece on the bottom of this one um So we've got yellow on the bottom, a bit of translucent, and then the, that's the transition piece. I don't know if you can make that out on the camera that yellow and gold blend beautifully together don't they they might work as a nice mica shift actually might they you know the disappearing one I did and I'm just going to I've got quite a few scraps now of translucent over here so I'm just going to use the scraps up to make the shape Again, it doesn't. Uh, it oh, bit of green. It it won't affect the layering because once it's all smushed together, you'll never see it, will you? I'll just and the next piece. poking holes or anything in this uh, if you remember in um, one of my other videos we poke holes and get the layers to blend and I really just wanted some super nice layers in this one um, which is why I've done it this way just get these final bits filled in on top that'll do Oop. Looks a bit messy this one, doesn't it? But it will be fine, guys. I promise you. My clothes started to cool and it gets a bit crackly. There. I'll just give the bottom a roll. And stretch it into a nice square. And there we go, that's our three Skinner blends done. Uh, next, we will be doing our white and translucent. Uh, I'm just going to quickly get rid of these little bits because they'll drive me mad if I don't. And have a little wipe up. 
top's getting a bit grubby. There we go, ready. Okay, so I've got some white, uh, translucent and white here. And I should just be able to get two, two nice squares out of this, even if I've got to mix and match the pieces. these bits on they'll just be a bit of interest within the within the layer won't they waste not want not and all that okay so for this we're just going to do I'll just bring this other bit of translucent in that I had um, we're just going to do um, translucent white translucent white Being really sticky today, so uh, we've got mm, we're gonna have a big bit of translucent on that. So I think I'll start with white, guys. So I'm just gonna do white, translucent, white, translucent, and that'll be our kind of buffer layer from uh, colour into um, the fracture part. Now I must remember that it's upside down so the white is on the bottom that's where I need it to be. There, that's nicely pressed together and that's our next layer and our final layer uh, let me just get these scraps away. Our final layer is going to be some uh, translucent um, and we're going to chop this off. I've let this rest because I want it to become fragile um, and choppy. Um, so we're going to chop this up. I'm going to put a little bit of white alcohol ink in there. Um, let me just get these pieces out of the way because they're sticking to my hand yeah we're going to put um, a little bit of alcohol ink in and make a kind of a four fracture um, I did leave a link at the beginning of the video to my technique for doing that the fractured quartz um, but there's lots of them out there isn't there Right, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this one at once because I want to try and keep them uh, quite separate, the pieces. And they're not all bunching up on me. And you just want some nice angular pieces, not too small. And look a little like I said with uh, Pardoit um, when it goes cool it goes quite brittle again um, so it does keep it um, it stops it bunching together I'll just break these up and I've done some large pieces and some smaller pieces. Um, you know the score if you've done this technique, guys. You know, you just want some nice uh, fractures uh, in the clay. Seeing as this is breaking up so well, I'm going to put these pieces together. Now I did try doing this 
uh, you know the normal way we do it where we um, poke loads of holes in um, and I just wasn't happy I haven't been happy with how that looked because I wanted a, a you know a real fractured lock um, so I did a little test run and it looks pretty cool um, as part of the stone there we go right, we've got all our pieces I'll just give them a little roll then they break up and make sure there's not too many big clumps stuck together like them uh, and I should really get myself a piece of paper shouldn't I then I've not got a mess on my desk right what I'm going to do is I'll just push these to one side because I don't want the um, the alcohol ink I'm just I've just got a Viva Decor uh, white here because I don't want it to be too overpowering you know I just want like a little flash of white um, and you could put micas in I suppose mica powder in um, but I don't want my stone to look shiny like glittery um, but white mica powder would work a treat if you'd used some pearly coloured clays and stuff to do this um, yeah what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to put if I can find where I've put my alcohol where is it oh there it is one sec I'd used it to clean my worktop over there right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two sprays of uh, this is just alcohol guys 90 odd percent alcohol I'm just going to put that down there and I'm just going to put one drop of white in uh, excuse me because I just don't want um, it to be too strong and I'm just using the end of a brush to thin it out in this alcohol and then I'll dump the clay in it in a second once it's thinned out a bit I'm actually going to put another another squirt in just to water it down so that it's not too strong that'll do and now I'll just drop my clay in it toss it around in it and I think that will have picked it all up nicely just going to leave that sat on my desk for that alcohol to evaporate guys so I'll just leave that there a minute I'll go and get myself a drink or something I'll give it five minutes while that evaporates off and then we'll come back and we'll get it um, compacted together and that will just give us a nice little uh, layer um, to finish our um, block off right I'll go and get myself a drink I'll see you in a minute hi guys right, this is uh, aired off now enough for me to um, try and get it to come together and of course I don't want to squeeze it too hard so I'm just going to get all the bits to gel first um, and get it into um, about the shape we need and then I'm just going to use one of my old blocks to apply some pressure and just to get it into that square shape that we need oh I suppose I could use my squares couldn't I I keep forgetting I've got these don't I where's the other one just 
want to try and get it together as much as possible but of course you still want that structure but I don't want any air trapped in it or oh, as little as possible should I say right before I go any further I'm just going to wipe around it with some alcohol to move any excess alcohol from the outside layers because um, I just don't want like a bit of a white stripe showing up um, so I'll just give the outside um, a little wipe just to make sure that it's um, removed it as much as I love this clay it leaves a coating on everything your blades your rollers it's um, I'm assuming it's the beeswax in it that does it um, correct me if I'm wrong by all means uh, but it just seems to I don't know if you can see it just leaves a film on everything that it touches like your worktop and right I think that is probably going to be the best I can do without losing the shape that I want so I'm just going to pop um, oh no I've broken it trying to pick it up it's, oh this clay honestly as soon as it starts to cool down so what I said I, I only use it as for specials really because if you've not got prepared and got it warm and everything else it can be a bit of a pain but it is fabulous and it is nothing like how I was battling with that stupid femur the other week is it right I'll just make do amend <laughs> with these scraps that I've got here just to make sure that this has got a top on it and it'll push down into some of those um, nooks and crannies that were um, left well hopefully it will there's a little hole there I'll just pop that big on, bit on top um, yeah hopefully that will um, just blend in nicely with any holes that were left on the top um, because no matter how much sanding you do if there's a little hole in it it's not going to uh, sand away is it right there we go that will do and that's our last piece that you're saying hooray um, I know these stones um, do take a bit of time to put together but they're so worth it because um, once like I've said this to you before once you've got the hang of how certain things work when you put them together um, you can mix and match the layers and do your own thing you know so you could do half of the tutorial um, from the say the green stone and half the tutorial from this stone and mix and match the patterns that we use um, right so green down and then gold down just make sure these are about the same size I'll just give them a little roll in between laying down just to make sure that uh, I haven't trapped any air and then the next one which is a little bit too wide is yellow on yellow I mean you could have done a massive uh, strip of this really couldn't you with the four different blends in it um, but I just wanted to keep it uh, simple and um, I think working with 
just two colours in a blend is um, it's just enough isn't it for your brain to to figure out there we go just have to keep my eye on the sides because some of the colour shifts different um, yeah that just suppose it matters and then we've got our white and uh, translucent layer and again I've not done any poking or anything have I I want some nice bands on this one guys just give that a little tweak so that it fits the top of my block oh and then finally we've got our um, fractured layer uh, which I might have to just stretch a little bit let's roll it because that'll help with the any air uh, bubbles won't it and I'm just hoping that I put enough alcohol ink for it to be noticeable although with the fracture um, it will probably cause quite a bit of um, placking won't it so that would add to the, the look I suppose um, even if I haven't put enough white alcohol ink down I thought that was a cat hair then right so that's our layers done I'm just going to go around and give each side a little roll just to bring them together a little bit and I'm not going to distort this either guys you know normally I would get something and push it down on the top um, I just thought I would keep the layers straight and then I can manipulate them once I've cut a slice off um, you know I can distort it and things then um, without um, having to distort this because I don't want to spoil those um, different layers we've put in right so that's ready um, I don't think there's a few where you can see the layer as well but there we go um, that's that done I'm just going to give the top of this a little wipe with alcohol because I've got a couple of bits of fluff stuck to it and that's the last thing we need when we've done a lovely piece of jewellery to find a piece of fluff sticking out of it there we go right I shall let this rest uh, just a little bit um, let those layers settle in and then we will come back and um, I'm just going to make uh, a simple cabochon uh, I think I'll just use my sculpey mould guys and I'll just make um, a simple small cap with a piece um, I might wire, wire wrap it or something um, and then I'll do another video where we will do um, some better pieces out of it um, but for this I think I'll just do um, a nice simple cab and do a simple wire wrap on it for you um, I've actually just um, there's a young girl I like called Oksana Crafts um, she does all sorts but her main thing is uh, wire wrapping and some of her if you've never done it before and you fancy trying it just go to some of her beginner classes um, she's such a lovely uh, tutor you know really takes the time and shows you what she's done and she has some fabulous ideas um, and she's just posted um, it's like one shape of pendant but six different tops to the pendant and they're amazing in fact I might do that with one of these um, because I will speed it up because it takes forever um, I might show you one of them and I'll put the link in uh, but go and check her out and Lily Tree as well 
um, she's a really lovely lady, in, an English lady, she works with a lot of copper, um, I've followed her for quite a while now just because of her copper work, she does some beautiful things as well, um, they're, re they're both really worth going and having a look at, it's quite mesmerising sometimes watching them, right I'll shut up babbling, I'll uh, get me, I've made myself a nice cup of tea, um, so I'm just going to go and let this rest, drink my cup of tea, uh, see if I've had any comments and stuff and I'll uh, and then I'll come back and we'll do this, see you in a minute. Okay guys this has rested a little now, um, I just need to decide which side I'm going to cut from and I think if I look I can see that my uh, colour bands that I put in are running this way so I'm going to take that as the front so where's my blade I put it down safe and forgot where it was right oh for those of you who were um, in my group um, you know I've mentioned that my husband's had a an operation on his neck um, he had a pinched nerve so they've done a yucky operation um, and he's doing really well um, he's driving me mad but he's doing really well um, so I just keep feeding him and then coming back in here and then we can see uh, I've just cut the end off because of course it's quite tatty and there's our bands uh, and the colours look a little weird at the minute um, but once they're cooked obviously they uh, they're not as strong because of the translucent oh and if you do use pardo translucent it only goes translucent once it is cold it'll still look white when it comes out the oven so if you do buy some don't be shocked when it comes out the oven uh, because it will still be white I always plunge it into iced water and the clarity is just beautiful right so i'm going to cut a slice off um i think i would like to do a little round one but there may be a le enough left over to fill another one um so i'm just going to cut off a healthy chunk about quarter of an inch i'll put the other bits to one side i'll just make sure that i haven't got any bits of bubbles showing again it doesn't um, matter too much but you don't want it um, uh, you know you don't, you don't want your surface to have a bubble in it do you really um, let me just clean this with a bit of alcohol because it's a bit dusty because I've not used it for a while just give it a wipe out and you can put these in the oven these um, sculpy moulds by the way although to be fair I've put quite a few of my moulds in the oven and they've been fine um, one of my friends oh, I can't remember which one it was um, suggested snipping a bit off and put in a bit of the mould in the oven to see what happened and I thought that was a brilliant idea um, so forgive me for getting uh, who suggested it but it is a, a great idea if you're wary so yeah I think I'll just do a nice little circle uh, and I only need um, about half of that for this to work so I will cut it in half and I am going to uh, just distort it a little bit um, so that it's not quite straight with its bands uh, I don't know which side to use to rub the face uh, I think I'll use this one looks a bit more interesting so I'm just distorting it a little bit with my fingers um, just to put a bit of interest in to it and I'll just pop that piece into the mould and start to press it down 
and I think I've sized that quite well. We shall find out when I roll it. Yeah, just putting it in the mould distorts it a little bit sometimes. Oh, sorry. Um, I normally have a bit of bubble wrap on my side uh, because there's a, another half of this mat that you can't see. And I put a bit of bubble wrap down um, to stop my tools clattering. And my husband pinched it the other day to wrap a parcel because we didn't have any other bubble wrap in the house which is unbelievable to be fair because I always save my packaging right so oh I must have a bit of clay on my roller it's leaving a line let's just roll that through again make sure that back's nice and smooth and I just like to pull the edges in then I don't get a lip so that's one and I think I will put this other piece in here uh, but I am going to obviously distort it a little bit uh, let's see if we can get this bit to stretch I'm trying to get this into a some sort of a triangle shape there we go this is probably a little bit too big for this mould uh, but we could use the scraps and as you know I don't like waste so I may just pop the scraps into something else oh let's just flick that little bit off the top and I shall just slice this piece off and then come at it from the other angle just make sure those edges are pulled in and there's not a little ridge oh I think that one will look quite funky and waste not want not guys um, Let's see what we can do with these little bits of scraps. Let's pop this into here. Let's stretch it a little bit. I'll fold that bit over. Like so. Oh, it's stuck to me. And I'll pop this bit in. And try and match that band a little. Might be a little bit fragmented, but I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll pop that scrap up there. It might be awful, but... And then we'll just fill in the back with these bits that are left over and then I shall put a piece of this on the top There's a little bit there that isn't um, quite as filled, so I'm just going to squish. My back's probably going to be a bit too messy on this one. But I'll just do this and see what happens. A little bubble there that I need to get rid of. Oh, that was handy. Let's slice this off. Oh, that shouldn't look too bad 
for a few scraps never chuck your scraps away even if you just use them to infill on uh, bigger beads and things so I've got a couple of little scraps there but they'll be fine I've just got a few little bits guys I just want to make sure I've got them off um, there we go right I shall pop these in the oven and see you when they come out see you in a minute hi guys we're out of the oven we're lovely and cool and I am so pleased with how these have turned out oops sorry I've got YouTube running in the background um, the only thing I would slightly change is I obviously put a little bit can you see a little bit too much white in um, so it's very white that band uh, but I'm not going to complain because it, it bridges that crackle has worked out a treat um, I was a bit concerned that um, it would look um, these aren't buffed by the way guys so the colors are quite dull um, I was a little bit concerned that the crackle would um, that's the one with the scraps look at that it's fab um, I get really excited over these stones don't I but I just really enjoy doing them yeah that fracture has worked an absolute belter and on this one you can see it um, it's worked really well um, so I'm really pleased with that block really pleased the colors I picked everything I'm blowing me on trumpet uh, but I really like um, the way I've got the, the colors transitioning and everything so yeah fabulous I'm gonna go uh, I'm excited because they've looked they look lovely and I know my friend's gonna love these colors she's very earthy colors person she wears a lot of mustards and greens and things so i know she is going to love this and she loves my four stone stuff so she's asked me if i would make her something nice um <clears throat> anyway i'll go and give these um the surface is pretty decent on them to be honest guys with them being in the mold so i'll just go and give them a light buff and polish and then we'll come back and I'll turn I'll probably use this one uh, we'll turn this one into a nice pendant uh, I think I will do a bit of wire wrapping but because um, I fancy having a go at the one I mentioned earlier um, obviously I can't claim it as my own style so I will speed it up a little bit and if you want to learn how to do that you can go to the lady who's done it uh, and I will leave a link in the in the um, in the description for you because uh, it just wouldn't be fair for me to just um, you know to do that but I do want to have a go and I think this size would work well with it um, not saying I'm going to copy it verbatim uh, but I just like what she's done with the base it works really well for um, pendants that you don't want covering a lot anyway I'll shut up I'll go and get these polished I'll get some dig some wire out and um, I shall see you all in a minute hi guys I'm back these are all nice and buffed they look lovely with my best Lancashire accent you see the backs um, you can't really see the translucency uh, but I will take a couple of photos holding them up to the light so you'll be able to see better but they do look beautiful uh, right I think I will take this one and um, I'll uh, do some wire wrapping with it um, so I've got out some um, 
this is a square wire and it's silver plated copper wire uh, and that's a 21 gauge I believe yes 21 gauge or 0.8 mil and I have just a length here that was in my box uh, I'm going to assume that this is a 24 gauge because it's generally what I use uh, or it could be a let me check the millimeters 24 is yeah it's probably a tw this is probably a 24 gauge just a round uh, silver plated copper again these are non-tarnish allegedly um, so that's what I'll be using for my wrapping and um, I'm just going to cut some lengths uh, I'm just getting this wire straight uh, I think I'm probably going to need about 12 inches for um, each strand and I'm going to cut three strands um, so I think 12 let me just think about it guys bear with uh, I need that to go up there and twirl round a bit and over there and twirl round a bit uh, so let's say that that's half yeah I'm just gonna do uh, I'll do 13 to be on the safe side so I'm just gonna do 13 inches of this wire um, I'm gonna have to straighten it a little bit because it's quite curvy I've got some straightening pliers here but I'll just cut it first 13 oh there we go I've got my three strands I've got my strands of wrapping uh, I'll get these straightened out um, I'm just going to pause the video and then I'm going to put it on silent and because then I'll speed it up uh, and I will leave a link to the ladies um, site where I got the inspiration to do this wire app uh, so I shall uh, see you on the end of the speedy side
There we go, guys. I was a little bit fingers and thumbs, but there's a bit of wire wrapping as well. Lovely little pendant. Looks nice on both sides. Um, I've managed to hide those hooks nicely behind the um, wire. Um, so there you go. Don't forget, if you want to do this, go to um, the site that I put in um, the description. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with these yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something. Oh! And my beads are flying everywhere. Um, and I shall see you all. Oh, it's a bit twisted. I shall see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.